Hi, I'm Bill Goodrich, founder of God Cares Ministry, and I want to thank you for your interest in the God Cares For You Bible Lesson Curriculum. It's a tool that was designed specifically for you to help residents of senior care homes grow closer to Jesus and to experience a more abundant life in Him. You know, the journey through a care home can be very challenging, but yet it can also be a great blessing as my friend Ken experienced. Ken was about 65 years old and he had a stroke. And because of that stroke, he had to be placed in a nursing home. Ken was so distraught by all this change and loss in his life that he told me that he wanted to end his life. But after a few months of attending our Bible study, Ken began to see his life from a totally different perspective. He surrendered his heart to the Lord, was baptized, and Jesus changed him from within. Ken found hope and a new purpose in the Lord, and he became such a ray of light in that nursing home. Ken later shared with me, moving into this place is one of the best things that ever happened to me because this is the place where I found Jesus. The principles that we shared with Ken and thousands of other residents over the last 35 years have had an eternal impact on their lives. So many have found hope and peace in Jesus, even in the midst of significant loss and profound changes. Why is that so? Because the principles we share in our group services come from God's Word, and God's Word is life-giving. When God's Word is shared in a spirit of love and respect, then embraced in sincere and focused prayer, lives are changed for the good. These are essential. God's Word shared in God's love and embraced in focused prayer. These will never fail to bless the people you disciple. It is important, however, that we who are called to share God's word, share messages that address the present needs and concerns of our audience. We need to understand what these present needs are and what God's word says about them. Throughout the first several years of ministering in nursing homes, I began to realize and see a consistency in the emotional and spiritual needs of the residents I visited. When I would address these issues and concerns during our Bible Fellowship Hour, they would become more interested and engaged in the messages. They would ask questions and have an openness to act on the directives of Jesus. This encouraged me, in fact, it compelled me to look deeper into Scripture to see what God says about these topics. I watched over the years how residents began to go beyond wanting church to actually wanting to grow closer to Jesus. And many were changed, transformed by the renewing of their minds. Even people struggling with dementia were impacted by God's word and the love that came from the care team members. A few years ago, I was led to write a ministry book to address the primary emotional and spiritual needs of our seniors. The book was written to give those who serve in the nursing home mission field a resource to give to the residents or to read and study in a group setting. I've been deeply encouraged by the response of those who have read it and used it in these group services. In fact, recently a daughter gave one of the books to her mom who lived in a care home. And after a few weeks of reading it, her mom shared how much she enjoyed the book. And then she took it in her arms and she said, I feel like this book was written just for me. The book was a blessing not only to her mom, but it gave her daughter confidence that her mom had received Jesus as her Lord and Savior. What an invaluable gift it was and has been to the family. I received a letter from Ed who ministers in a nursing home and he told me that he gave the book to Diane, one of the residents, and the following week, just before the worship service began, she thanked Ed and for the book. She asked for permission to say something, and with permission, she came up front with the book in her hands, and she shared with the audience that because of this book, she now realized that the Lord has her in a new stage of life, 
and he has helped her to see and understand the good in her current circumstances. She shared that God has shown her her purpose for her being in this nursing home, and she now has confidence that he is with her, leading her on this journey. This was a huge change for Diane, a new beginning for her. These are only a few of the stories. There's so many more. But from those messages within the God Cares For You ministry book, we have produced a Bible lesson curriculum. The curriculum has seven chapters or themes which come from the book, and we have written three lessons for each chapter, a total of 21 lessons. And I'd like to take a few minutes to give you a snapshot of what those chapters are. The first chapter is Living with Change. It engages our audience by talking about all the changes we've experienced in our lives and how that affects us. Then it addresses how Jesus never changes, speaks of his unchanging love and word, his nature, his character. Then we explain some of the essential changes we must make in order to be able to grow closer to him. Chapter 2 a lasting hope. Hope is very important. In fact, we cannot live without hope. The problem is that when we put our hope in things that have no guarantee and those things don't work out, things like money, people, systems that are in this world, and when those things don't work out, it can be devastating, disheartening. Yet, when we put our hope in the Lord Jesus, we find that he is faithful to do everything he promised. Even when things seem to be absolutely hopeless, Jesus is trustworthy and capable of fulfilling his promises. Chapter 3, Walking with a Loving God. So many people have made religion their God. Walking with a loving God explains the first steps for actually know and walk with God. Or for those who have strayed from the relationship, this chapter helps them understand how they can return to God. It also explains what we can do to grow in this loving relationship with him because we are to grow in the grace and the knowledge of Jesus at any age, at any stage in life. And we want the residents to be able to do that. Chapter four, friends forever. Nursing homes are often perceived as a home for the dying. But when residents learn to reach out to one another in friendship, the home can become a caring community. God wants the residents to develop eternal relationships, even in the care home. It's incredible what happens when these residents begin to reach out to one another. Chapter 5, Finding Peace. Jesus promised a peace that surpasses our circumstances. His peace is for everyone who trusts in him, but there are at least three things that can rob us of his peace. The lessons in finding peace reveal these three peace thieves, as we call them, and how to overcome them. Chapter 6, A Greater Purpose. God has a purpose for us, and part of living a fulfilled life is to know and live out that purpose. A greater purpose tells how we can come to know and realize and walk in that purpose. And finally, the last chapter, Amazing Grace Forever. This speaks of heaven. Heaven is incredibly amazing, beyond explanation. But the best thing about heaven is something we can begin to experience here on earth. Amazing Grace Forever opens a glimpse of heaven that gives the audience the courage to persevere until Jesus takes us home. Now, I have shared these lessons, these principles and Bible verses and stories for many years. They have helped so many of my friends in the nursing homes find hope and peace and purpose in Jesus. So putting them into Bible lessons so that others can share them is really God Care's way of empowering other nursing home missionaries. We're so honored to be part of this work. 
because the Word of God shared in love and embraced with focused prayer transforms lives. So let's take a look at the curriculum. The curriculum has 21 lessons, three lessons for each of the chapters we highlighted earlier. Each lesson has what we call an overview page. The overview page will give you a summary of what is in the three lessons. It will also give you some helpful guidelines for your own personal study of the chapters and topics. And I want to emphasize here how important it is that you take the time to personally study these chapters and topics. These lessons were not meant to be read like a devotional, rather studied and shared from your heart. And the more time and energy and prayer you invest into this personal study and preparation, the greater your impact is going to have. Not only with the people in your group services, but also when you're interacting with individuals throughout the home. Since what is being taught in this curriculum are Bible-based principles, they are not only helpful for the residents and care homes, they are life-giving and timeless for anyone who will embrace them in, in focused prayer. Each individual lesson has a preparation sheet. On this sheet, you'll be given a summary of the individual lesson. And if, there's, uh, if you're on lesson two or three, it will give a review of the previous lessons in the chapter to keep you flowing and focused on what has already been shared. But here you'll also find a list of uh, points that and goals for the lesson. And also down here are some recommended songs that you can use. Now, I personally use the Sunshine Society's Victory edition of their song and scripture song books. This has been really helpful for us in the nursing home ministry, but there are other groups out there that have really good song books. Finally, on this uh, preparation sheet, we have helpful hints. And over the years, I have found many little tips and ideas that have really helped enhance the effectiveness of our ministry in the nursing homes and it's particularly in group services. So on these helpful hints, you're gonna find some really good advice to consider as you're developing your ministry in the nursing home. Okay, so in the message notes, you will see that each message has four primary parts. There's the introduction, the Bible lesson, the application, and the decision prayer time. Now, the introduction is the part that introduces a concern or an issue or a problem, often includes a few questions to engage the audience. Sometimes we have a good story that, that we can talk about, and this prefaces the, the Bible lesson. Now, the Bible lesson reveals what God said about the topic or what Jesus did and said about the issue or the topic that you brought out in the introduction. Now, the application to the Bible lesson is your third part, and this is the main part of your message. It gives your audience the steps to live out what Jesus had said in, in God's Word. This is the important part of your message because it gives people everything they need to understand how this applies to their own life today. Now, fourth is the decision or prayer, and we're going to come back to that in a few minutes. But first, I want to point out are a few questions. Then these were written out to engage a smaller group or an individual that you might be sharing these lessons with. But we want you to be able to have the, the questions and the tools, if you will, to be able to engage those you visit on an individual basis or the smaller groups. Now, the last thing is the scripture handout sheet. For and these are created for your audience to keep, follow along as you're sharing the Bible lessons. We love to have them read either portions or whole verses. It, it helps them stay focused in the message. You'll see how it's written in the outline, your, your message outline, how to engage them in, in reading and participating. Now remember, uh, the fourth part of your message was the decision and prayer. 
And this is really important. What I have learned over the years is that when the minister gives the message and then he says, okay, let's bow our heads and pray. And he prays a message for the people and they, some of them say amen, some of them realize it's over and they just go home and they never talk to God about the message. Friends, I have learned that it is amazingly effective when we can engage our audience in praying from their own hearts. But a lot of them are timid. A lot of them have not prayed out loud before. A lot of them are not sure what to say to God. And so that's what the bottom part of your uh, scripture portion is. We have written out a prayer that's related to the message. And so what we do is we say to the residents, was this message helpful? Yes. Well, I, we wrote this prayer on the bottom of your, of your paper, and I'd like to read this for you. And after I read it for you, if you think it's a good prayer, then we can all pray this together as believers. And so then I read it very slow. And when you read it, you want to read it with a cadence and see there's a slow cadence to this rather than praying, Our Father in heaven, thank you for sending your son Jesus to help. People cannot keep up with that. Anyway, after you share this one time, you look at your audience and you ask, was that a good prayer? Would you like to pray this with me? It's amazing what happens when these people are reading intently these prayers to the Lord. This is where they are changed because they are asking God themselves to do what we as ministers of the gospel can never do. It's an extremely effective part to your message and you will see fruit as a result of it. Finally, on the back of their paper is a word game. We put together word searches and crossword puzzles. This is to give the residents something to do during the week. But what's nice about it is it, it uses the words that were used during the Bible study so that they're rethinking what was shared by you as you minister to them. So now I want to give you a few key points for using these Bible lessons. And as I have mentioned earlier, these lessons were not meant to be read like you might read a, or share a devotional in a group setting. Rather, it's intended that they would be shared as an overflow of your personal study and prayer and preparation. Make these lessons yours. Let them come from your abiding relationship with Jesus. Feel free to change the stories or the questions or even the approach to addressing the issues and topics from the chapter. You know, some of the people who have used these lessons already found that they needed to divide some of the lessons into two parts because of the cognitive level of their audience. And this may be particularly necessary in a memory care unit. So again, fashion these lessons for your audience. Use relative, relatable stories, the testimonies that will engage your audience. Like I have shared these messages for years, but almost never in the same way. The principles are the same, but the approach is not always the same. My only urgent caution is stay with the scripture. It's not the speaker or the stories or the testimonies that bring people closer to Jesus. It's the word of God. When the Word of God is shared in a spirit of love, the Holy Spirit will accompany your message. He will transform the hearts and the lives of your audience. The Holy Spirit comes in the name of Jesus and travels on the wings of God's love and God's Word. So please keep the name of Jesus and the Word of God preeminent as you share these messages from a loving heart. I believe if you hold to these essential truths, you will never fail to bear fruit. Remember, God Cares Ministry is here to serve you. Our website has many resources to help you be an effective missionary. 
I want to highlight uh, a ministry handbook that is titled Nursing Home Ministry Where Hidden Treasures Are Found. In it, you're going to find a few chapters on how to prepare and share a life-giving message in a care home. The same principles that are in this book are also shared in our training seminars and videos. And I, I want you to know about these because I want you to become skillful in extracting life-giving principles and messages from the scriptures. And this book and the seminars we give will help you and support you in developing your skills. Now with this orientation video comes your first three lessons from chapter one. These are freely given to you to share with your friends in the care homes that you visit. I'm certain that if you prepare these lessons, as I have explained, you and your audience will be significantly blessed by God's Word. So there are 18 more lessons from the other six chapters which you can purchase through God Cares Ministry, and I hope you will purchase them and use them. And I look forward to hearing back from you stories of how God has transformed lives, because I know that if you share these messages, you will see lives transformed in the name of Jesus, because God's Word shared in God's love and embraced in focused prayer, transforms lives. God bless you.